Hey everyone, welcome to my first look video and first impressions video of the brand new for 2020 Outdoor Vitals Summit Sleeping Bag. And the version that I have here today is the zero degree Fahrenheit model in a size regular. Now keep in mind, this is not a review video. I have not put this sleeping bag through any rigorous field testing. Instead, I'm simply showing you what it looks like, what it feels like, because like you, I am quarantined and sheltered in place right now, so I am not going out into the backcountry and not able to experience conditions that would actually test this sleeping bag. So as you can see here, this is a mummy sleeping bag with a center zip. There isn't terribly much to talk about in terms of the general style, but I'll go over some of the finer details. Okay, so this sleeping bag weighs 36 ounces, or at least my sleeping bag weighs 36 ounces, and it comes with a half ounce stuff sack as well. Now, the website has a claimed fill weight of about 25.7 ounces, or 730 grams, but the website also lists the weight at 38 ounces, meaning the website's listing is two ounces heavier than what I've measured. So somewhere, whether it's the shell fabric or the amount of down fill, I have come up with less in my sleeping bag. So is this a zero degree bag? Well, I think with the amount of down in this bag and the way that it's designed, I think zero degree Fahrenheit is likely to be the lower limit. Apparently this was EN tested, but I can't say for sure how it'll actually perform until I go out into the backcountry and get to sleep in some cold conditions. So I actually think it's worth mentioning before I go into the details of this sleeping bag, that the retail price right now is $270 for this zero degree bag which if you compare it to other options on the market, and especially considering that this is meant to be an ultralight sleeping bag, it's a phenomenal value. How well it actually performs, I will keep you posted, but for what you get right now, I'm actually very impressed with the pricing. So here I am getting into the sleeping bag. It's incredibly warm inside, so I'm sweating bullets, but thought I would go ahead and at least get into the sleeping bag to test it out. And as you can see, it's quite snug. I like that the widest part of the sleeping bag is actually right where my shoulders are at. So it makes a lot of sense for where that's positioned. Um, and then it looks like there's about another two inches on either side of my arms of just like extra wiggle room. Some really high-end sleeping bags have what's called a differential cut, which means that the inner part of the sleeping bag or the inner circumference is less than the outer circumference of the sleeping bag. And this not only has the benefit of saving some fabric and some weight, but mostly it means that when you push up against the inside part of the sleeping bag, it doesn't necessarily cause the outside to compress quite so much. Whereas when you have basically what is essentially a quilt that is then rolled into a sleeping bag, when you push up against the side of the fabric, there's no resistance and you end up compressing it down. And to adjust the hood, there are two drawstring closures, one on each side of the hood. And the hood, when I get into the sleeping bag, just feels pretty shallow. I mean, it actually looks pretty good. It goes over my forehead, but it doesn't really feel like it stays there. And if I wear a thicker hat, then um, this hood really wouldn't cover even my forehead. It looks like they've put some thought into the zipper to try and prevent it from catching when you open it or close this sleeping bag. But... Unfortunately, the zipper does still snag quite often on the ultralight fabric. And because of the center zip baffles that are behind that zipper, as you're zipping it up, if the zipper hits one of those baffles, it's gonna snag for sure. And as you can see, this is a center zip sleeping bag. So there's two zippers actually that go up the middle. The zipper on the bottom allows you to regulate your temperature more easily. And then the zipper on top, that's the one that you would open to get into the sleeping bag. And I'll point out that the zipper on top, you can open it from both inside the sleeping bag or from the outside, but the zipper on the bottom, you can actually only open from the outside. So you have to reach your arm out to vent, but assuming that you're gonna be venting anyway, that doesn't seem like it's such a deal breaker. You know, the other benefit of a sleeping bag is, unlike a quilt, where you rely on these straps to try and keep the quilt in place, because the sleeping bag wraps all the way around you, it means that even if you're lying on a slightly smaller sleeping pad, your arms don't fall off the pad. All right, so one of the key questions that I had was whether or not I would be able to layer effectively inside the sleeping bag. So if I'm going to be using this in really cold conditions, I will most likely be 
intending to wear my clothing to bed with me. Otherwise, I'm just carrying extra weight around. So here I am putting on a puffy, and typically I would have a couple more layers underneath this as well, but I wanted to see whether or not I could get into the bag without causing uh, the down of either my puffy jacket or the sleeping bag to compress. And if you've been watching my adventure videos, you'll see me wear my clothes to bed all the time because I tend to push the temperature limits. And so here I am just moving around inside the bag just to see how much extra wiggle room there is. And it's pretty snug. With this down jacket, it feels like it's not compressed, but it's almost there. I have very little wiggle room, but still enough that I can get a down jacket into the sleeping bag. So here I'm showing you what these shoulder baffles look like. And uh, these shoulder baffles have these, uh, these little Velcro tabs so you can secure the shoulder baffle around your neck. This is a little bit different than what other sleeping bags tend to do with their shoulder baffles or just with their baffles in general. Other sleeping bags tend to have uh, these neck baffles that go behind your neck and then kind of around the side. And this one instead is meant to cover your shoulders as well. There's also a little pouch here which you can use to store some items. It's not quite big enough for like modern smartphones. You know, you could put a headlamp in there. But I do wish that with these shoulder baffles, they had used snaps instead of Velcro. I, I find Velcro to be kind of fussy. I don't like the way that it is likely to stag my clothing, whereas snaps are really easy and equally lightweight. So as you can see, the sleeping bag is a box baffle design. Uh, it has vertical baffles going up to the upper thigh area, and then from that point on downwards, you have horizontal baffles there to keep the down from leaving the footbox area. Here's a closer look at the zipper, and um, this zipper is interesting. It's basically like a normal zipper, but has this plastic spreader on top. But in practice, it's not going to overcome situations when the baffle uh, gets caught up in front of that zipper. And here's a view of the box baffle that's behind the center zip. Uh, it actually extends past the zipper. And here's a view of the foot box. It's a rectangular foot box, which I think makes a lot more sense than the circular foot boxes that uh, sometimes exist because your feet, they tend to form more of a rectangle or a trapezoid even. And the fabric, it feels like most tendineer calendared fabrics. You know, it's soft, but it has the potential to be a little bit clammy. And that's just because a calendared fabric, which means that it's been rolled with heat. Uh, the calendared fabric helps prevent down loss, but it also feels a little bit different on the skin than an uncalendared fabric. Okay, so that wraps up my first look at this sleeping bag. You know, I think the takeaway here is for $270, to get a zero degree sleeping bag made of ultralight materials, I think the price is phenomenal for what you get. So I'll continue to upload these really informal first look videos of the different types of gear that I think you guys might be interested in. Stay tuned for my longer term reviews. Here, all I'm doing is giving you a quick look at some of the features and like my initial unstructured thoughts. Whereas in my review videos, I will actually put a lot of thought and structure and use the data that I've gathered over the course of you know months or years of testing to then show you what my final conclusion is about the product. So if you like this type of video, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and that way I'll know that you are keen to see more of these brand new products that are just being brought to market.